For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah. I'm the Community Engagement Administrator for Durham County Library. Today, we're gonna to continue our mini-series exploration of experiencing art through our senses. For the next few minutes, blind artist John Bramblett and art expert Jackie Siri will be leading us through the sense of touch and how it can be used to experience art. Now the question is, do you have anything you do not like to touch? My son used to hate the feel of grass under his bare feet. He would try and put him down on the grass and he would lift his legs up in the air to avoid touching the ground. Let's take a look at how we can use touch to experience art. Well, welcome back everybody. This week is really exciting. We're going to be talking about touch and that is your specialty. Oh my goodness, yes. Touch has got, got to be my favorite thing. Um, you know, if you think about it, it's one of the first senses that you start using. Like with a newborn baby, the first thing that they do when they're born, you know, they can't even see yet or anything like that, but they'll reach out for their moms, you know, and they're touching, they're wanting to fill the world. You know, and in your life, if something really great happens or something really bad happens, touch is usually the first sense that you want to, you know, that you want to Yeah, like use. a hug. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so if, if you're really happy to see someone, you want to give them a hug. Um, if you, if you put your hand out for someone to shake your hand and they don't shake your hand, you feel a little offended you know, <laughs> by it. And, and if something bad happens, the first thing that you want to do is go over there and give them a hug, you know, or, or you know, pat them on the back. Just imagine like your favorite sports team when they win the, the, the big championship at the end of the year, all the guys aren't, aren't sending each other texts or emails or anything <laughs> on the field. You know, they're, they're slapping each other on the back and they're lifting each other up and yeah. touch is huge. It's just a, a big part of ourselves. Well, and especially you being visually impaired, that's how you navigate the entire world. That's so true. You know, touch is incredibly powerful. In fact, it's our sense of touch that lets people who are blind or visually impaired be able to navigate a city and in fact the entire world yeah you know what we should do what? is take eagle out and show everybody how you kind of do this let's do it all right <laughs> so i've come up to the historic denton square because i want to show you how the white cane and how a guide dog like eagle here actually works so with the white cane you're using it to reach out and feel the environment around you like finding these steps and a sidewalk. So if you want to make a turn, you find where the other sidewalk is. You can fill the gaps. You can feel where the grass is. Have to give Eagle some love here. Now with Eagle, she's trained to use this harness and this handle is bent so that it puts your hand right over her back. And she knows to turn certain ways and to stand and sit in certain ways to let you know what's in your environment. So to find the steps, she finds the top steps and stands. Now to find the sidewalk, I say find left and I move my hand and she finds it. Wow. Well, that is really interesting. Oh my goodness. You know, it's, it's incredible to me that, that just by using a white cane or a guide dog like that, you can travel around an entire city or even the world by just using your sense of touch. And I, I've got my cane here just, just to show you a little bit more close up that the handle here, you hold it in a certain way. And that way, as you're, as you're feeling, you're reaching out, you can feel the sidewalk. You can feel all the little grooves. You can feel when you the grass, even how rough the sidewalk is can give you information. And it's um, just a way of reaching out and feeling it all. And a little, little ball here, it rolls. So you know, it just <laughs> lets you glide glide along the road. So it's going. basically like an extension of your your finger so you can feel the edge of the sidewalk, You're, you know. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. You know, and it's much better than just getting on your hands and knees and trying to feel your <laughs> way around. And then like with the harness here, so, so we have Eagle's harness and her, her head goes right, right through here. And then her handle here, it works just like the handle on the white cane. So... Um, you're barely holding on. You're just using a very, very light touch. And Eagle's been trained to know, um, to be able to tell you through the way she moves, if there's like stairs going up, if it's a curb going down, if there's a branch that's going to hit you in the, your face. Um, if you're traveling down the street and you tell her to go left, right, or, or, or whatever, she can let you know what she's doing and, what, and, and, and what's around you by just the way she moves. And all that gets, gets sent up through the handle and you can feel it in your fingertips. It's just incredible to me. They are pretty amazing. Oh my goodness. You know, I have, I have used guide dogs for all, over 10 years. And my first guide dog, she's actually in the Animal Hall of Fame for how much she traveled. It's just such an incredible and effective way to do it. After all this time, it still blows me away how smart these pups are. <laughs>
Well, with all of that information and, and basically you being a visually impaired person using uh, touch as your main source to you know navigate your environment, mm -hmm. how does that translate into how you paint? Oh my goodness. You know, it has everything to do with the way that I paint. I lost my eyesight whenever I was in college and I started learning how to use the white cane, which meant that I started learning how to use my other senses to replace what vision used to do. And I thought, you know, after I, I learned how to travel across a city by just using my sense of touch, I thought, well, my goodness, if I can get across a city, surely I could get across something much smaller, like a piece of paper or canvas by, by using the same techniques. So that's what I started doing. And here, let me show you. And it's not, it's not hard at all. The first thing, though, is that you usually use your eyes to know what color is. For me, I use my sense of touch to understand color. So the first thing I do, though, is, is I braille my paints. So braille is just a way of reading that, that's tactile. So there's little raised dots up here. And up here is an L, G, and an R, which means light green. So I have that. I know, you know, I'm holding light green. That's pretty easy but even more fun. And what I like a lot better is that I actually make each color feel different. Wow. So white feels different than black and black feels different than white and red and all of that. And I do that by changing the mediums. So these are mediums. You know what all paint is, you know, if you think about paint, it's just sticky stuff that's gonna hold on your canvas, hold on your paper and not fall off. Well, that sticky stuff is actually the medium. It's what, it, you know, it's what makes it sticky. The other part of paint is the color, and that's the pigment. So basically, paint is just sticky stuff with color added to it. These are different kinds of sticky stuff. So this one here, if you add this to paint, it makes it feel like silk or water. It's mm -hmm. just an oily kind of feeling, actually. I love this stuff. This one, if you put it in there, it, it makes it feel really, really thick like toothpaste. So I, I mixed some paints here, and let me show you. So the white paint here. And it's easy for me to find because it's so thick. This stuff is like toothpaste. So I'm going to hold it up. So hopefully you can see that, but it's just really thick. Like it makes me want to brush my teeth with this stuff. <laughs> but this other paint, the black paint, I've mixed with a different medium that makes it feel like oil. And it is just runny. It's just really, really slick. So if I was to touch the, the white paint or the really thick paint, I know what it has to be. If it feels like toothpaste, it's got to be white. If it feels runny like oil, it's got to be black. But this lets you even go further because if I wanted to make a gray, I'm going I'm to mix up here, that's halfway between the, the, the white and the black, I can just mix for a texture, like a feeling, that's a little bit halfway between the white and the black. So I'm going to add a little bit more because that still feels a little thick. Okay. So here, here we go. So you end up with a gray that's halfway between because the texture. This feels this feels about halfway between toothpaste and oil. So I'm going to call that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, that is a really interesting way of doing that. You know, it's it it really lets you use your your sense of touch to do the work that your eyes would normally do. Of course, the other thing that a sighted artist would use their eyes for is to know where they are on the canvas and where they've been. But if you're a visually impaired person, you can use your sense of touch to, to determine that, if, whether you're in a room, a city, anywhere. So it makes sense that that's how you would find your way around on a canvas as well. And in fact, let, let me show you how that works. It's not that hard. All right, so I have my paper here. Now, let me find my black paint. This black paint is mixed so that it actually feels different. And it, it's a special paint that dries really, really fast and it leaves a raised line that's a little, like, it almost feels like rubber. So it's something that I can feel. So this paper is extremely smooth, but this black paint le leaves a little bit of a raised bump that I can feel. So if I want to make a line here, I can. And I'm going to blow on it because <laughs> it dries fast, but maybe not that fast. And then, okay, so I see I can feel where the end of this line is. And I'm going to make another line. All right. So if you remember, whenever we were at the courthouse square and I was walking down a sidewalk, imagine this line is that sidewalk. And then I'm using my cane or, or I'm, um, I'm working with Eagle and we, we want to find left as we're walking down. Then I, I, we find the other sidewalk and we can fill it with a cane or, or I can fill it with Eagle or her harness. On here is the same idea. So I can fill this line. And then I can fill this line. So I know exactly where on the paper I am. I'm right here. 
And also any other marks that I make on the paper, it's other places for me to fill. So the more marks I make, the easier it is for me to be able to fill and understand. So with this, let me make sure yeah, that's black. I, I can fill this and I can start to, to make a little bit of a painting. Now I have a lot of practice. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna get some fingerprints in here and that's okay. Fingerprints are okay. Cause I'm just gonna do a really quick sort of thing here. And do you remember that green I had before? I'm gonna get some of this because, and I have this other paint, it's a blue that I've already mixed some stuff with. And this blue feels really weird. It feels like water. <laughs> it's paint, but it feels like water. Okay, and this, this green is creamy. The blue feels like water. So if I end up with a green that feels a little looser, then I know I've probably got the shade that I want. I've got paint all over my fingers. So what I'm gonna do, and this is just gonna be a really loose, painting here this is for fun so I'm putting my finger in the very center where I feel the black and what I'm doing is I'm just putting out some fronds really loose just working them out like that let's make it a happy little palm tree <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to be out in the Car Caribbean right about now I think so so I'm just feeling I can feel it everywhere that I am now, if I was doing a bigger painting, what I would probably do is go back over this many, many times. I do different layers and add different shading. And I can do that because I can go in and fill what I've done before. With every brushstroke that I make, it gives me more to feel. So I've got this blue paint, and now I'm going to get some of this white. And that's going to make it feel, oh gosh, I just love the way this feels. Oh my goodness, I love that. I'm going to use that. So... Give us a bit some water down here how about so i'm going to put a little water now i'm going to go in with some titanium white because maybe maybe this water is rippling a little bit a little more titanium white yep nice and thick nice and dirty there we go now i'm going to go in with um, the black all of this the field, let this dry. Okay. I'm going to cover this in a little bit. And what we're going to end up with is a pretty little island. I don't know, if I was ever trapped on a tropical island, I could only bring one thing. I'd probably bring my paints. <laughs> It'd be a good way to spend some time. So then we end up with a really quick little island scene. You know, one thing about using your sense of touch to paint with is that you definitely get messy. <laughs> but but it's worth it. It's so much fun though to actually get your hands on the paint. Well, it's pretty amazing. I know to me this looks super difficult to tr try to paint just through touch, but you've had years of experience so has it gotten easier for you over time it's definitely gotten well I don't, I don't know if it's easier but you're always pushing yourself and you're always trying to to um to touch better <laughs> to touch more <laughs> you know but we've done workshops in museums and schools all over the nation with literally tens of thousands of, of people and we'll we'll blindfold everyone and we'll give them paints that, that feel different like my paints and raised line drawings and in five or ten minutes everybody's painting and we're all laughing. It's just so much fun, but it's surprising how quick people adapt and can start understanding how to use their sense of touch this way. Yeah, and not only that, but when, when you're touring a museum or a gallery to take in the art and think about all the different textures that are in the paintings. You know, if there's a dress that a woman's wearing, what fabric it's made of, if they're the fur of an animal, or, mm. you know, just the wetness of a, a sea painting. I mean, there's all sorts of different, but you really got to think about it when you see it. That's so true. You know, I, I, I've seen you lead workshops in museums where you'll bring in fabric and you'll bring in like, like a, a furry little thing and, mm -hmm. and leather and all kinds of things to fill. And it may sound like, you know, well, how much of a difference will that make? Because you know what silk feels like or you know what a, you know, the fur feels like. But if you're looking at the artwork and you're engaging your sense of touch at the same time, 
it is incredible how many ideas you just start popping in your brain and how much more of a connection you, you make with it. Yeah. And you'll remember it longer. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's for sure. And you can also add more of a tactile quality to your own art. You know, um, you can see that even, um, with normal types of painting, sort of like, like, like oil painting, you know, where Van Gogh, like if you looked at his painting, it's extremely thick. And if you ever get a chance to touch our thick painting like that, it just feels incredible. That wonderful thick layers of paint. And, you know, and it feels very different than like a watercolor, which mm -hmm. is very, very thin. And, um, and there's other paintings that have, you know, a lot of texture, even kind of a gritty feel to them. That's true. Um, collage where you can have all these different materials put onto a painting. Yeah. Yeah. You can use something as simple as yarn to create a raised mm -hmm. line or a hot glue gun can create some really interesting textures. There's mm -hmm. all sorts of material or even around your house that mm -hmm. can, that can add texture to your piece. You know, and, it, and it's, it, and it's funny. I think some, sometimes people are, um, want to restrict themselves to, to something that's just sort of flat, you know, they go, oh, this is normal paint, but oh my goodness, whenever you engage your sense of touch, it adds so much more to the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, touch is going to be one of my favorite senses. I know I say that almost every <laughs> week, like this is my favorite sense, but touch is something that I use constantly in my studio. Um, but what are we doing next week? Uh, next week, we're going to go over hearing and how that can be incorporated in your art or oh. experiencing art. Okay, what I'm hearing is music. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited. That's got to be my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's going to be a really fun one. So be sure and join us. Yeah, th thanks, guys, thanks. so much.